Hey everyone, James Reeves, TFB TV. It is our honor, it is our privilege to be here at LTT, Langdon Tactical in Arizona with the man himself, Ernest Langdon. Ernest, thank you so much for being on the oh, program. Yeah. And I know he's a <laughs> modest guy, he's a modest guy, but uh, everyone out there in TFB TV land knows you and knows about you and your company. And what does Amy call you? Like an, an engineer? A gun-geneer. gun yeah, gun yeah. Engineer. One of I'm the... I'm not a school-trained engineer, so she's like, yeah, you're a gun -geneer. Yeah, and you're one of the best at that, too. So it is, again, a, a privilege to have you on. And, of course, we want to know your top five guns. And I think everyone is curious to know from the mind of Ernest. So it's really interesting. You asked me the question, and I started, hey, okay, so wait a minute. How? And you were deliberately vague. Uh... And I originally started down like, and I can only have five guns the rest of my life. And then I was like, no, what are my true top five? What are the guns that I shoot the most? Uh, and then are my go-tos that I'm going to be, you know, when I go to the range, what do I want to play with, shoot the most? Okay. Uh, so that's the direction that I took with this. That's Not good. necessarily these are the guns that if I could have another, or these are my favorites, or right. whatever. Right. And some of them are my favorites, but I'll go through. So the first one is, and, and you should know this one, so this is the... <laughs> Uh, a PX4 full size. Uh, I actually, actually, I've got three. Um, I've got the the almost 70,000 round gun that you shot. Um, I've got another gun that has been my go-to after that one, uh, also with the red dot. And then this one I just put together. The trigger on this one just came out spectacular. Uh -huh. um, so that is the gun I am shooting the most right now. That's my go-to if I'm going to go to the range. More than likely, that's the one that I'm going to shoot the most. Why? Um, because of the way it shoots. I mean, it's, it's incredibly durable. I mean, I, I've got um, hundreds of thousands of rounds through several of them, and they've just been just brutally du durable. Mm -hmm. uh, very reliable, and the fattest, the flattest, fattest, the <laughs> flattest, softest shooting uh, nine millimeter pistol that I've ever experienced. I mean, outside of a competition gun that's got a compensator or something, I don't know, that it is, it, it just puts everything else to shame by orders of magnitude. It's in, impressive. Let's talk about the 70,000, not this one, but you have the 70,000 round gun. I mean, do you have it with you? I think it's right here, yeah. Wonderful. In the box. So you made a passing reference to that. So Tell us is, about uh, this. We did a test uh, several years ago. I want to say it was either 20, I think 2016 or 2017. I talked Beretta and like, hey, look, um, you know, the. I had already shot the PX4 Compact a lot. I had one in, in about a year and a half. I put like 54,000 rounds through. I did a write-up on pistol form about it. Loved the gun. Um, and I was like, oh, let's talk about the, the full-size gun. So they helped kind of support it with some ammo and stuff. So I shot 50,000 rounds through the gun in a year. That's crazy. Um, and nine stoppages, no like true malfunctions where the gun stopped working. Um, just stuff you could clear real quick. I had one part breakage in the 50,000 rounds, and that was actually the locking cam block. An interesting, completely different design than the 92. Some people are familiar with the 92 uh, locking block breaking. This cam block just makes the barrel rotate. So it split in half. The only reason I knew it split in half is the day before, two of those weird uh, stoppages that I had had happened the day before, and I was kind of pushing the test. This was towards the end. So it was like 46,000 rounds or something, if I remember correctly. And I took the gun apart, and I was like, oh, shit. I don't want to get too far afield, but can you think of any other handgun that is more reliable, more durable than this? Just off the top of your head. I'm sure there are a few that can More be. reliable and more durable. Um, I mean, I don't think uh, the next gun that I would say is probably right there with it is the P30. Mm -hmm. The, the P30 is, mm -hmm. is incredibly durable, reliable, all of those things. I mean, it is a tremendous gun. I just think this gun is softer, flatter shooting. Well, right. now we're going to cyber bully TFB TV viewers into purchasing the PX4, and I think that there are a lot of people out there who are going to be pleasantly surprised. Speaking of pleasant surprises, let's get on to let's number four, because I don't easy. know the, this at all. I asked This Ernest one won't to do take it. nearly as long because we're going to say the same thing. So number two is the gun that I carry every day and I probably shoot the much, and this is a PX4 compact. Okay. A little bit more concealable, shoots just as well um, because it's a compact frame, so this one's a little easier to reload and control and manual of arms and everything, but this gun shoots like a full-size gun. Um, 
It's smaller, slightly smaller than a Glock 19 um, in a couple of ways. Uh, it is, again, unbelievably reliable, unbelievably durable. That's my, that's, that actual gun is my daily carry gun. This is what you carry mm -hmm. every day to protect mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. And especially when you shoot it literally side by side. Like if you put down, you know, your Glock 19 and then pick this one up, you're going to be mad because it's a, that's a you know, holsters. <laughs> you got to buy holsters and magazines and you gotta do the all whole the thing. things yeah. to get everything up and up and running. So give yourself a plug here before we move on to the next one. If I want the best PX4 in the entire world, I get it from you. Oh, yeah, we do. You can buy the thing set up, ready to roll. Red dot, uh, stipple from Boresight, MP3 coatings on all the parts. A trigger job. We got all the different parts and accessories. We can set the thing up however you want it. Sure. So if you're lazy garbage like me, you don't want to do any of your own work. You don't want to round anything up, and you want one of the best triggers. Uh, again, you guys absolutely blew me away whenever I did that LTT carry video mm -hmm. just out of the blue. You guys sent me one to try out, mm -hmm. and and I was absolutely blown away at how good the trigger was. So let's move on to the okay. number three. Next gun that I shoot the most and spend the most time with big shocker oh <laughs> is my this is my my personal 1301 this is a what we call a gen 3 gun so it's a solid mag tube gun but this is the one that i that i would say i probably go to the range with the most and obviously you're f very familiar with the 1301 but this 1301 uh tactical is is the gun that i shoot the most this one's got a couple of unique things that that i'm playing with this one has the Pro lifter for the three inch one that keeps the lifter out of the way, which is really cool. And this one's got a Holosun 509T on it, and I have the ring and no dot um, shooting that. And I really, I'm really digging that setup. And this is a relatively new light setup for me. Um, it's not a new light, a TRL RM2. That's so what I have on mine. Thousand lumen light. It's you know super easy to use. Very intuitive with the push button yeah. and all that stuff. So I like it. That's what I got set up. For. I got the pressure pad adapter for my 1301 because yeah. I don't have the fancy rail like you have. I've got the original furniture, just Velcro that bitch to the mm -hmm. side. It's great. But talk to me about the 1301 generally. Why is this a, a shotgun that's worth a damn? Um, I think the big thing is it is incredibly soft shooting, uh, especially for the weight. It's a relatively lightweight shotgun. So when you pick it up and you go, you go, ooh. This is going to be spicy when I shoot oh, yeah, it, right? Yeah. Compared to other guns that you may be familiar with, and um, it is unbelievably soft shooting. I mean, way softer shooting than other, well, you know, call them recoil-operated shotguns that are that people are very popular. Um, so that's one unbelievably reliable with a broad range of ammunition, and that's really key. Like if you you can pretty much get any you know ammo from walmart or wherever that you can find and it'll run it um and of course it'll run three inch magnums and you know full power slugs and all that stuff the couple of, i mean there's a lot of little details i mean they did a really good job blink operating system gun cycles crazy fast the forcing cone is extended on this one so this is a uh, you know a very high-end barrel from beretta so it patterns incredibly well um just a lot of you know, just a lot of great features for the gun. The, we've, we've got it set up with the Magpul stock, which I think ergonomically is a little superior to the standard stock. The 4N, Zukov 4N from Magpul, we can hook it up uh, so it gives you M-lock rails, and then you can put pieces and parts and lights. I mean, I, again, two big things a, sh a tactical shotgun needs um, is a light, and you got to have ammo on it, because you're probably going to be naked. Right. Or in your pajamas, right? Yeah. Ooh, so, ooh Ernst. <laughs> Making me warm here. Um, are we in agreement that the 1301 is probably the best tactical shotgun on the market today? 100%. Yep. Can I get this one from you? Yep. Rigged out like this? Except for the light. We're not selling that light. Yeah, sure. Everything else we got. So, yeah, and then there's your second plug. So, at this point, I think you owe me a check now. So, uh, <laughs> number two. All right, number two. This is the one. This is the one I think is going to throw you through for a loop, okay? This is my, um, not number two, but my, this is number four, isn't it? Whatever, however you want to uh, phrase it. This is my, one of my favorite guns to shoot. What the this hell is this? This is a Savage Mark II <laughs> and 22 long rifle. I've got a Boyd stock on it, adjustable length of pull. But yeah, I got a little bipod on it, got a Gemtech um, suppressor on it. 
uh, and this thing is so much fun to shoot. It's just ridiculous. I, I never pegged you as a, oh, a 22 my God. guy. This is so much fun. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you don't have a, a 22 bolt gun that you can shoot subsonics through, especially with a suppressor on uh -huh. it, you're, just, you're cheating yourself. Uh -huh. it, it, uh -huh. it, it, it's unbelievably fun to shoot. Um, so, Why the Savage in particular? Uh, I mean, because you can spend a ridiculous amount more and not get any more gun. The, uh, this one, I forget what they call this one, but this is their 16 inch fluted barrel gun. I didn't need, you know, a really long barrel. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes threaded already uh, for, uh, you know, half by 28. So you can just thread a suppressor on it and you're done. But I, I want to say I this gun was like 250 bucks or something uh -huh. like that. It's uh -huh. yeah, sub, so it's sub super 300. Yeah. The chassis cost more than the Oh, I can tell. Uh, yeah, yeah the no, chassis I... costs more than that, and then you—it just—it's got a great trigger on it. It's you know, it shoots half inch at 50 yards all day long with whatever ammo you get out of the bottom of your ammo can. I mean, it'll shoot better with, you know, if you really play the 22 game and weigh your bullets and get Ely and you know, yeah, you can do all that. But for for the fun part, it does everything you need it to do. Are we going to see a 22 at any point? <laughs> I'm just being I had honest. To ask. Why do I like I had to shoot? To ask. I love this thing. This yeah, is, you love it. You this, love it. This but this year, you're not going to be in the 22 business it's anytime cheap. soon. No, no. <laughs> cheap to shoot. You know, you got five and ten round mags. They cost. They're very inexpensive. It's got a you know oversized bolt handle on. It's got a great trigger. I mean, I don't know what I mean for yeah. just a fun gun. If you like to. That's funny. This is a surprise. Let's do number five or number one, whatever it number is. Number one. No, these, this we're, we're no going to number order. five. I started at the top. You started at the top. The ones okay. I shoot the most, and then I went from there. And then the last one, of course, this is the one, is another one that I probably didn't go to. This one's been around for a minute, um, so much so that it's still got still a key, got key mod, mod. <laughs> four end on it, right? So probably need to change that, but I don't mount much on there, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, got another uh, TRL-9 on the front for a light. Got a uh, Vortex uh, 1 to 6. This is actually a Daniel Defense, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's a Daniel. This is one of their original DDM4s from, Holy I mean, 15, 16 years ago or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you've so got this some significant been, carbon fouling. <laughs> oh, yeah, this gun's been shot a ton. But, you know, I mean, this, this is one of my, if I want to go play um, games, and it, this one doesn't know who his daddy is anymore. It's been changed a ton. Right. Um, I change, play with different optics on it, but this is kind of one of my go-to. 16-inch gun, I don't have to worry about, you know, SBR stuff. Um, you think it's still got the original barrel? Nope. Doesn't. I already know it doesn't. Uh -huh. I got, and, and they told me, well, because I talked to some of the guys that know, well, we would have replaced it for you. And I was like, yeah. So I got a pen barrel from, a, a hammer forge barrel from Centurion and put on there. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know how many years ago. Well, I mean, I love DD, like Daniel Defense. They make one of my favorite ARs. Oh, I mean, yeah, they just make the cold hammer forge barrel and chamber. People mm -hmm. don't really recognize that. They just think it's like a, a Gucci label, mm -hmm. but it's like really a lot. I've been to their factory. A lot goes into these guns, and it's really, I mean, Ryan and I have tried to break mm -hmm. two of them, literally tried to break two of them. Yeah, good luck. And, and yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's insane how good yeah. these things are. And funny note, they actually do, I'm not trying to validate like your antiquated VHS key mod handguard here, <laughs> but but Daniel Defense actually does use key mod on their, I think it's the ISR, mm -hmm. because you need less clearance on the other side of the handguard for mm -hmm. key mod. So there's still a use for key mod, unfortunately just, not this. But. It's just really small. Um, it's just different for so it's really small. It's easy for me to kind of manage and control and uh, it's easy for me to, you know, get into alternate shooting positions and grab a hold of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just, it's, it's one of those things where like, oh, I should change it too. And I'm like, but why? Because I don't, I'm not bolting anything on it, so I don't care. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, it's still, it's still free floats. Thing shoots is an absolute tack driver. And I'm an LPVO guy, but I validate love LPVOs. my decision. Um, so why an LPVO in my mind is great. First of all, I mean, you cannot compare the the image quality that you get with an LPVO uh, and, how, and the clearness of the glass and how you can see the target with an LPVO versus a dot magnifier. Um, I'm not, I have mm -hmm. dot magnifier guns and they're great, I'm not against them, but you throw that magnifier up there and you're not getting the same image quality as you're getting here. But I can still see my reticle even if my dot's not on. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I can put it in one power, I can turn the dot on and I've got a dot and I can shoot it like it's a red dot gun. 
Um, or if the dot's not on, if the battery died, any of those kind of thing, I throw it up, I still got a crosshair. Right. And right. I, a big of enough crosshair that I can see, right? So that's my kind of thought processes behind that. I like, I don't like tur exposed turrets on a gun that right. I'm working with. Um, I want them closed off and I want, you know, an etched reticle that I can do hold offs with right. and not try to start throwing clickies for this type of rifle. Unsurprisingly, a man of exquisite taste <laughs> and, and good looking for being a, a young, a young 39 year old man here. 39, yeah, I wish. <laughs> Ernest, thank you so thank much you. for having us. Thank you for playing along. This is like a favorite theme of mine and of TFB TV viewers. So I know that you. I can't wait to hear the hate. No, 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 no. I doubt it. No, this is, this is actually a, a pretty, you know, maybe you'll get beat up over having your uh, $200 22 and a $500 chassis. But, uh, but other than that, Corinthians and leather in your Civic. <laughs> right. um, but, but other than that, no, I mean, this is great. Everybody, I'm sure, is going to enjoy your thought process. Thanks for playing along, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We're bringing you more from LTT.